Well, one of Australia's most unusual export growth areas is medical trials, as we've just been talking about. The Australian government's Austrade is actively encouraging overseas biotechs to come here to Australia to conduct these clinical trials, many of which are held adjacent to universities, research institutes or private medical facilities. Now, while some might hold qualms about Australians being used in such trials, medical experts suggest better health, come, health outcomes and medical breakthroughs will happen more often with more of these trials. You've just heard Anne Harris explain. To the point that government, state and federal offer grants and incentives to reduce the cost of these clinical trials. One who benefited from this support is Stella Seraf, whose company Spinogenics is holding phase two clinical trials for a drug called SPG302 for the treatment of two cruel conditions, Alzheimer's and motor neurone disease. Spinogenics is based in San Clemente in California, but she joins me now when she was in Melbourne. SPG302 is developed as a pill, and the aim, we aim to restore function um, by working and treating the synapses. Synapses are connections in the brain that are fundamental and ground zero for many of these conditions. OK, so as you've developed this company, as you've developed this drug, quite clearly you've got to a point where you need clinical trials. Why did you hold these clinical trials in Australia and not, say, in the United States, your home country? I get that question all the time, why Australia? Australia is a top innovator, and there is just such an efficient system within the regulatory system that we have top-tier collaborators here. Uh, we've been able to move very quickly. I came here about a year ago, where we started our clinical development. And in December, I came back, or earlier in this year, I came back, where we started treating motor neuron disease. It's an efficient system. The government here really supports medical research. And we've had such a tremendous experience, so much so that I'm back here to do the phase two trial in dementia. So, just explain one other aspect of this, and that is, when you do clinical trials here in Australia, though, they are recognised by the European authorities. They're, they're recognised by the Food and Drug Administration in the United States. So, that's another reason why clinical trials, successful clinical trials in Australia, do end up going a long way. Yes. So, to your point, so we have already also received clearance in the United States uh, to further these trials in the same disease indications. So, working to, the agencies work together. We are taking the same data that we actually get here in Australia and submitting it to the regulatory authorities within the United States of America. So, the importance of something, say, ALS, which is motor neurone disease, is one aspect of that, which you have done trials for here already. I mean, the importance of that is that two people are diagnosed in Australia each day. Two people die of it each day, which is, uh, you know, it, and it's up until now, there has been really very few treatments that can prolong life. It's mainly trying to alleviate some of the conditions that do come as a result of that, that really crippling disease. Yes, um, motor neuron disease, ALS, the indication that we're after, is a devastating disease. Our approach with SPG302 is the potential to be the first regenerative therapy for ALS. We have done multiple animal studies that shown that we've been able to rescue respiratory function, motor function, and also have had an impact on cognition. We are now very excited. As you know, we're knee-deep in our phase two trials here for motor neuron disease, and we wouldn't be moving this quickly if we didn't have such a wonderful collaboration here with the multiple universities that we're working with. I was going to ask you about that because Australia has always prided itself on its medical scientists and indeed the, the, the skills and the research which is coming out of its university. So being able to tap into that, does that make it easier for a company such as yours to be able to get the types of results more quickly than what you otherwise might be able to get in other countries? It's a, we, you know, we've had wonderful collaborations here in Australia. Um, we've been able to work directly with likely-minded collaborators who really care about their patients. And so that, that benefit has time and time again made an impact on us and also in our decision to be here right now to do our dementia trials. And we are planning to do trials in schizophrenia. So, that being the case, I mean, it's wide-ranging and it's really sort of groundbreaking stuff that you're doing. 
you need to find out, and that's an important thing. And so it's also speed to market with these types of drugs when you come across them that really gives you the point of difference in the marketplace. Yes, I mean, our drugs are very different, as you said. This is SBG302 works at a level in the, at the synaptic level, which is new. It provides hope to restore function and also provide a, a means to give function back to the patients. And so this is something that's very unique and different than other approaches that just seem to just halt the disease and symptom management. We're very excited about where we're headed and the possibilities are potentially endless. Okay, so how long has it taken you so far to get to the point you're at where you're conducting these phase two clinical trials? So currently we're in phase two trials for motor neuron disease and also for dementia. It is a little early, too early for us to be able to provide a timeline as to, you know, when we're going to be approved. But I can tell you that we're working as efficiently as possible to get um, and working with the agencies, uh, both here in Australia and the United States of America, to make sure we can get this to people as fast as possible. And then looking back, how long have you been working on this for? How long has this, you know, this particular treatment been in the pipeline, as it were? Yes, I founded this company in 2016 with the hope of creating better treatments for these very devastating diseases like Alzheimer's and ALS. We've come a long way. Development, drug development is a marathon. Um, I actually remember the day where, you know, there was the blackboard and we drew this, I'm a chemist, so we drew the structure. And then obviously, then we had to do all the animal studies. And now here we are. This is a dream come true. We are where, you know, we had wished we would be. And so being here now doing these phase two trials, um, we've come a long way. So just explain one other aspect of this. I mentioned at the beginning of um, our introduction, Austrade and the role of the Australian government in basically trying to seek out companies such as yours for these clinical trials. How did they find you and what sort of support did they give to you? I was introduced to the advantages of coming to Australia by other collaborators that I was working with with the United States. Um, Australia has done a wonderful job in taking advantage of other um, conversations that we've already had within our regulatory uh, system in the United States and taking and bringing that to um, the, the ethics group and the HREC here. Uh, so we leveraged that. It wasn't as though they came and sought us. It was just it was really understood that we can get things done fast here. You guys have a wonderful system already set up, which we could take advantage, and then also just take that data and also move it back to the United States. So it's just a, it's a win-win for the patients. Spinogenics, we are focused on trying to get treatments to patients as fast as possible. I'll tell you what, Stella Seraf, more speed to you, and, and we really do hope you have enormous success for these terrible and debilitating diseases that not only affect so many people, but also their families as well. Many thanks for your time on the program today. Thank you so much.